our mission is to impact lives and transform lives and impact generations and that's one mission that God has given us we are here in Lawrenceville Georgia we welcome you to worship with us this morning hallelujah Amen. this morning I want to remind you of the word of the living God the Bible says Jesus said he's the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but except through him and the word of God is truth is the truth God is the truth and his word lives forever and ever amen, amen. the Bible says that he I'll read a scripture to you let's put 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 actually 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verse 8 if you can put it on the screen and if, if you are joining us you can hear the sound of my voice you have your Bible open your Bible, let's see what the law says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. Verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. So the Lord says, I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I'll read that again. I will be your father. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This morning, as we are celebrating fathers, I, I know it's, it's a unique day, a very special day, but a unique day. Father's Day brings joy into the hearts of many. For many, it brings pain. For whatever reason, one reason or the other, maybe you have a father who wasn't available you have a father who was abusive you may have a father that has been called to glory some have their fathers that are here and present and caring for whatever your situation may be this morning the bible says that in all circumstances we should thank the lord thank the lord in all circumstances in the good, in the bad, in the ugly, it is the will of God to thank the Lord in all circumstances. And the word of God said, the Lord our God is our Father. The Lord our God is our provider. The Lord our God is our protector. The Lord our God is our refuge. So you have our Father in heaven who is the commander of the armies of heaven and he is your father your father is the maker of heaven and earth your father is the maker of the sea and every creature that lives in the sea that is who your father is that is who your true father is your eternal father he he said his promise one of his promises is that he will never he will never leave us nor forsake us even if our earthly fathers leave us or forsake us our living God will never never leave us that is who you have come to this morning that is who you have come to this morning with your father in heaven with him all things are possible and he has given us a word he says that we should honor our fathers and our mothers that is the living word today. He says you should do what? Honor your fathers and your mothers so that it will be well with you. So that your days will be long on earth. The Bible says that promise that comes with that commandment is the first commandment with the promise that God gave us. So could it be, could it be, could it be that you are going through trials and tribulations, you are going through hardships, because you have not kept that commandment to honor your father or your mother this morning life chapel we are following a noble tradition it is a day that we have set aside to honor our father of the house our bishop e moses Eshan. so if you have joined us wherever you are if you have joined to celebrate with us in this household of faith this morning 
we are honoring our man of God, our father, our father that God has chosen for us. So without further ado, I want us to be in the mood of prayer right now as we enter into the presence of God. Father, this morning, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you for your protection. Father, we thank you, Father Almighty, for being our Father. We thank you, Father Almighty, for thinking about us this way, that you have, Father Almighty, made a provision for us. You have given us a Father, O oh Lord, who is a loving Father. You have given us a Father who protects us. Father, you yourself have become our Father. And we thank you this morning, every burden on our hearts, Father Almighty, any ailments that we are walking with, Father, we have come into your presence this morning and we are yielding our hearts to you this morning, Father Almighty. Every word that you have for us, I pray that you will touch the hearts of your, your children this morning. Everyone who is carrying a burden, oh Lord, everyone who has questions for you this morning, everyone who has been crying, oh Lord, Father, we pray that you will settle hearts this morning, oh Lord. Spirit of the living God, I pray that there will be a strong unction, O oh Lord, in your household this morning. Father Almighty, I pray that you will not let us leave this house the same wherever your children have joined in from, whether on social media, whether they've called in, whether they are in this sanctuary right now. Your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in our midst. This morning, Father Almighty, we rebuke every devourer. We rebuke every satanic agenda, O oh Lord. We rebuke any evil spirits, any spirits on agenda, Father Almighty, to steal our word this morning. We bring them, O oh Lord, Father Almighty, on their knees in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Almighty, may your word come to heal us. May your word come to deliver us. May your word, Father Almighty, come to establish us. May your word this morning come to renew our minds. May your word this morning, Father Almighty, come to strengthen us, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we commit your man's servants into your hand this morning. That the word that he has for us, Father Almighty, this morning, O Basson Dadabayaba, the word that you have for us this morning will come through his mouth unhindered in the name of Jesus Christ. As he is ministering to us also, Father Almighty, may you minister to him. Father Almighty, we thank you for what you are yet to do. We thank you, Father Almighty, for your grace. We thank you, Father Almighty, for your healing this morning. We thank you for your deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus, agree with me somebody and say, Amen, Amen, and Amen.
great and mighty. Lord, great and mighty. I give you all the praise. 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 Sing the my own of Judah. Lord, great, 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 great Lord. Lord, great and mighty. I give you all the praise. I give
Come on, wherever you are, just open your mouth and begin to worship Him. Worship the Lord, worship the King of Kings, worship our Christ, worship our Savior. He's awesome. He's awesome. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, at the center of it all, it's you that I see.
are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are big, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater. You are bigger, bigger than the bigger. You are stronger, stronger than the strong. You are higher, higher than the high. You are greater, you are greater. Sing, you are bigger, bigger than the bigger. You are stronger, stronger than the strong. You are higher, higher than the high. You are greater. everybody a little bit of background to what we're going to be talking about. I want everybody to understand where the scripture is coming from. So this scripture comes from after Moses had died and Joshua is leading the Israelites to the promised land. <laughs> They're on their journey and they come face to face with this huge obstacle. They come face to face with the river Jordan. <laughs> 
And right now, the River Jordan is at its flood stage. It's way too dangerous for them to try and cross it on their own, and they would probably die trying. Now, I can only imagine the fear, the frenzy, the confusion, what's going through their minds. But, man, we know our God is powerful. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read, and I read. And the Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priest who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, when you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. Amen. Amen. So I want, there's one thing I want to do. I want to read the NLT version of verse 8 because I like the way that God, the way God speaks inside of that version. So God says, give this command to the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, <laughs> when you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop there. So I want everybody to notice that. Take a few steps into the Jordan River and stop there. <laughs> Now, that is all that God gave them. I know, like, with all the frenzy, everything that's going on, they're like, wow, God, <laughs> this is what you're telling us. And, you know, I can, I can only imagine they're all, like, you know, scared, they're worrying, but this is all that God instructed them to do. Now, as we all may know, this is a story where God goes on to perform this huge miracle where he parts the waters. He parts the waters and he allows them to walk through unscathed, unharmed. They walk through safe. <laughs> and our God is powerful. Amen. <laughs> okay. So one of the first things I always think about is why couldn't God just, you know, part the waters? Why was it that he had to give them those specific instructions for them to take a few steps into the water? But there's so much importance in what he told them to do, and I want everybody to take notice of that. Amen. <laughs> so what I realized when I read this, these couple of verses is that it took those few steps of them stepping into the water for God to access the power for them to access the power of the miracle that God was going to perform. He knew what he was going to do for them. He took those few steps and he brought them to the promised land. Amen. Amen. It took those few steps of faith for God to bring them to the promised land. That's what it took to access the power. Now, I don't know what type of situation, what obstacle you've come across. I don't know if you've reached your river Jordan. I don't know what you're coming across, but God is saying to take those few steps. Take those few steps, amen, amen. God is telling you that you need to walk in faith. Once you step out in faith, God will step in on your behalf. Amen. Amen. And the same Bible that told me about that story tells me that I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So no matter how hard your situation seems, no matter how big that obstacle, that challenge that you are facing seems, I'm telling you right now, God is saying to you, your heavenly father is saying to you, put your faith in me. Step out in faith and watch me perform that miracle for you now the thing is they didn't know they didn't know what miracle god was going to perform but he performed it for them anyways amen they didn't know they walked by faith and right then and there once they took those few steps into the jordan god parted the waters and that miracle was performed amen 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 so i want to encourage somebody today walk by faith and not by sight let those steps of faith access the power of God. Amen. Let God step in on your behalf after you step out into his faith. Yes. Amen. 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 So that Amen. is all that I wanted to say to everybody. And I hope that everybody can keep this inside of their mind as they go through their life. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Something about our God. You are high, higher than the high. Of all the powers of the earth, there is none that can compare unto our God. He is bigger than the biggest. He is stronger than the strongest. Whatever high power on this earth does not match our God. He is the greatest. He is the highest. He is the strongest and the biggest. Nobody like our God. Sing it on the big. Oh Lord. Greater than the Lord. You are big, Lord. Bigger than the biggest. You are strong. Come on, somebody glorify the name of the Lord. He is worthy. You are greater. One more time. You are bigger. Bigger than the big. Come on, say. You are strong. Stronger than the strongest. You are high. Higher than the highest. You are greater. Come on, everybody. Can you shout? Come on. You are bigger. Bigger than the big. Are you all ready to shout the name Jesus? You are high. Okay. Greater. Say Jesus. Everybody join in. Say Jesus. Come on and lift him high. Exalt the Lord our God. Nobody like him. Say. Can somebody give him glory in this house? All those watching on Zoom, all those watching on Facebook, 
on YouTube. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I understand you'll be back. But we have the most awesome choir. Come on. Everybody put your hands together. As they exit the stage right now, they are simply wonderful. The best band in the whole wild world. Come on, put your hands together. Let's appreciate them. Hey, oh, you that I see, oh Lord. Jesus. Go down for me, go down for me. I can retire early because there are some preachers in the house. Come on, give it up for Zora. Wow, we have preachers in the house. Come on, church, appreciate her. What a powerful exhortation. Ay, 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 ay. Hey, oh, Lord. Ay, ay. One of these days, we'll put one of the youth here. And they will fire away just the word. Not just an exhortation. The whole entire sermon. Hallelujah. Because, they, I mean, we, we, Manuela, Loisy, you know, Zora. Everybody has come with their flavor. And with a powerful word. Come on, come on, Life Chapel. Come on, Life Chapel. Ha, 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 ha. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to read two scriptures quickly. Um, please stand to your feet. I understand I have to do this quick. It's 1046. <laughs> oh boy. Just two scriptures quickly. We are going to read Proverbs 20, 1 through 7, together. And then I will read Ezekiel 22, 30, where my sermon will start from. So we are going to read where the sermon will end. And I'm going to read where the sermon will start. Is that fair? Okay. So let's read Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. It is our custom to stand for the reading of God's word. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, anybody remembers? They are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. This is not just about a preacher standing and just saying things. We don't speak fables here. We don't just preach our minds here. We preach the mind of God. We preach Jesus and him crucified. We preach that in his resurrection we have hope. We preach that there is salvation only through the, the, the work of Christ on the cross. We preach... Let's get into Proverbs. <laughs> Before I start preaching another message. Chapter 20. Let's start from verse 1 through 7. Let's go. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all are reading like you are reading, uh, 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 you know, some, some manuscript, you know, for, for some very diplomatic people. <laughs> we are in the presence of God. Okay. You ought to take steps of faith. I just heard the preacher say. So, put some faith into what you are reading. And let's read from verse 1 again. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The wrath of a king is like the roaring of a lion. Whoever provokes him to anger sins against his own life. It is honorable for a man to stop striving. Since any fool can start a choir, wow. The lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? Verse 7. The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to read to you from the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel. I'm reading Ezekiel 22, verse number 30. You can go there with me. Ezekiel 22. I'm reading verse number 30. Quickly. So, I sought for a man among them who would make a war and stand in the gap before me and, before, and, and on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Amen. Father, this morning we are grateful to you for our lives. We are even more grateful for your divine presence in our midst. Who are we, O Lord, that you will live in our mortal bodies, that you will manifest your glory in our lives and in this place. You are divine and we are mortal. Father, we pray that today, Every single soul that shall hear the sound of my voice will hear you clearly. Let your spirit move. Touch every man, every boy that will hear this message. And touch our women and the girls also. My Lord, we pray that on this Father's Day, as we speak to men, that everyone who hears this message will be blessed also. May you, Father Almighty, move in a special way. May you lift burdens. May you give your divine guidance and let every man be, O oh God, on the perfect way that you have set for them, for their lives, for their families, and for their future. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Shall we all say amen. Please take your seats quickly. I need to get into this message that I have entitled The Dying Breed of godly fathers. The dying breed of godly fathers. I don't know where I got that from. It just, the title just came. So, um, I want us to look at a few things. And I believe that there will be a blessing not only to the men, but to the young ones, especially the young uh, uh, men, the boys growing up. Uh, so you will become a real godly man and uh, eventually a godly father. Amen. That way, our young girls will also know who a godly man is. So that when it gets to the time you are making choices, you will know who to choose and who to reject. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So this is not only to men. I believe that some men are going to be in trouble because some women are going to go back home and they hold some men accountable. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you say a dying breed, what does it mean? Now, this is not revelation. This is not uh, anything from the Bible. I'm just going to give you a, a definition, a, a normal dictionary definition, if you like a Google definition. When you say a dying breed, it means a relatively rare type, okay, of person or a thing. You know, people like them are rare. They are not in abundance. We are talking about a dying breed. Godly people in the days of the Israelites, in the times of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. So the Israel, Israel started with Jacob, let's say. But in the days of all the Hebrew, Hebrew people, it was required of a man to be godly. God expected the man that he dealt with in Israel to relate to him. To not only know about him, but to have a relationship with him. So, they had godly people. People that stood with God. People that stood for God. People that became tools in the hands of God. People that, that executed the agenda of God. But in 2020, right here in the United States of America and all over the world, godly men have become a dying breed. It is hard to find a true godly man. Ask the young ladies who are waiting to be found. <laughs> and they will tell you that it is hard, it is difficult to really come into contact with a real godly man. And that's what we are going to talk about this morning. The dying breed of godly fathers. Godly fathers have become an endangered species. Or have become endangered species. It, it's like you need to seek. You need to, you know, really, really put in the effort to, 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 to go deeper. Before you will know who a godly man is. You will say, oh, but don't you have to just go to church and you will find one? You kidding me? No. You go to church and find a man. And later you will find out that there are some uncircumcised Philistines. Among the Israelites. There are what we call in the book of Exodus. The mixed multitudes. Are you hearing me? There are some people. That have the outward look. Of godliness. But inside. There is no godliness. And when you encounter that kind. And you join your life to that kind. Because they are not godly. Godly men. When they give birth. They will also not be godly fathers. I know we are talking about fathers. Right? But I want you to understand. That the Bible says, in fact, let's go to the scripture. 
in Ezekiel chapter number 22. I want to read just before the verse I read. My Bible is still loading. Let me use my, <laughs> you know, we use Bibles that load, right? <laughs> okay. Look at this. Let me start from verse 28, actually. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies for them. Saying, that says the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken, the people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. Are we living in any diff different times? <laughs> so I sought for a man. So you see, the scripture is not in isolation. He sought for a man because of what was going on. And I came to let you know that because of what is going on, God is still, still seeking for man who will stand in the gap. By the way, did I tell you to go on Facebook and share? Oh, I didn't tell you that. Okay, my bad. Please, let me pause for a moment. Now, don't say I'm getting out of the spirit. I, I'm not getting out of the spirit. I am still in the spirit. But go on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Okay? Oh, y'all like us being live on YouTube? Yeah, come on now. You can like us. You can share on Facebook and all that. Make sure that you like, you comment, and you share. There are three things that are required of you. Like, comment, share. All three. And subscribe to our YouTube. So four. Okay. Subscribe to our YouTube channel also. Okay. Yeah, you can even like Live Chapel too on Facebook. Okay, so like the service. Okay, comment and share. On Facebook, uh, on YouTube, like and subscribe to our channel. Because there's going to be more powerful services coming your way. Hallelujah. Last week, I went to him and said, man, you know, we get crazy in the house of the Lord. <laughs> the Bible says the people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery, mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. Doesn't that describe the times we are in? Even right here in the United States of America? And the Bible says, so I sought a man. I sought someone who would stand in. Not just to fight, but someone who would stand in the gap between the people and myself. That's God speaking. Someone who, who would stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land. Where are the godly men? Where are the men Powerful men of intercession. Where are the godly men who will stand in and really talk to God on behalf of the people? Where are the men who will bring their families before God? Where are the men? Today, rather than a man talking to God and bringing the wife before God, the hands are doing the job. Today, Rather than a godly man going on his knees and talking to God about his son or his daughter, the hand is doing the job or the belt. Where are the godly men? They have become a dying breed. I sought for a man, but not just a man. There is a particular kind of a man that God was seeking for. A man that will stand before him. Are you hearing me? A man that will stand before him. Let me tell you this. You know a man can overcome when he is a man who stands before God. 
You know a man is an overcomer. You know a man is a man of great success. Listen to me. Don't judge success by money and property and all. There are people who get all those things and their souls are burnt in hell. That's not success. That's not success. That is why the scriptures say that do not fear those that can destroy this body. Uh, you, you know, he says that be, be, be afraid of the one who can destroy both this body and burn your soul in hell. Are you hearing me? You want to know about success? A successful man is the one that God is looking for. The one that stands before him. You know who a godly man is? It's the man that fits, fits this bill. Stands before God. The Bible says God himself, the divine, the maker of all things, the creator of heaven and earth, he sought for a man. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If your boss wanted someone needed someone for something really good or something great to him or her. Okay? And came and you were that person he or she was looking for. How would that make you feel? Good, huh? Yeah. I, 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 I remember when a few students were needed in the, at a round table at the time I was, I was in school in Virginia Beach, and, and um, in fact, not a few students. There were like two or three of us. That's it. And the rest, you know, some faculty members and one or two other people. And I was one of them, and I was the only black. And I went, I didn't know that was how it was. Just a few of us. We were probably less than 20. And I sat there, and I remember one of my lecturers, Dr. Story, sitting on, 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 on my right hand. And asking me a few questions. He said, your accent, where does it come from? I said, I, I'm from Ghana. <laughs> I'm a proud Ghanaian. And he said, wow. You know, how do you feel being the one seated here, you know, uh, among all the students? And I said, I feel, I feel really good. You know, I, I feel elated. And uh, he looked at me and we, we had some talk. But... It makes you feel good, huh? Right? Yes. But I want to ask a man who is hearing the sound of my voice. Are you that man? Because he gave the description of the man he's looking for. God is looking for a man. A man that will stand before him. If you want to be a good father, there are a few things that you ought to be. Are you hearing me? Listen to me. You ought to be first a good man. You cannot be a good father without being a good man. Maybe someone will say, oh, you know, I know this man is not such a, I mean, a good man, but he's so good to his children. How do you judge good? When I go through, then you will understand that being a good father involves being a good example. So you cannot be good to your children or you cannot be a good father if you are not a good man. So you want to be a good father, be a good man. Be a good man. Because you will be judged by your children according to who you are, not just what you do. So hear me. I didn't say just buy stuff. I didn't just say just do things for your children. I said be a good man if you want to be a good father. Think like a man. Reason like a man. Act like a man. A good man. Function as a good man. Okay? You ought to be a good man. Think like a good man. Act like a good man. Function as a good man. Take responsibility as a good man. Some men... Don't like taking responsibility. Everything is someone else's fault. But when you are a man, 
you take responsibility. And the church said, Amen. I know last week by this time you were screaming your heads off. Today I need to take my time because I'm talking to men. <laughs> Work like a man. Because some men work like wimps. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you work like a tortoise. But you want to eat. Like a hunting lion. It doesn't work that way. Work like a man. And a godly man. These are all required. Of a father. I mean these are the things I just threw in. They are not even my points for today. <laughs> but I came to talk to men. And to the young ones. Young you know, boys here. That it is becoming rare, more and more rare, to find a godly man. But that breed should not die off. Hallelujah. Today, the people that we thought would, would be, you know, godly men or good men, in some cases, good is not godly though. But I just wanted to use that because some people outside will be like, oh, uh, godly, uh, some of us are way outside that. But you will get there. Listen to me. People that are expected to model who a true man is are failing. Let me start from the house of God. I am talking about pastors and bishops and evangelists, and apostles, and prophets, and elders, and deacons. I am talking about the people that the church must look up to, society must look up to as godly people. And many are failing. Politicians are failing. All over the place. It is very hard to find a good man among politicians these days. Because the, the, the most glaring attribute of a politician is fast becoming lying. Almost every politician is becoming a liar now. I didn't say all. Almost. Almost all. So you want to find a politician, you see, you, you, as soon as you locate one, go down the line and you see some lies here and there. Businessmen are failing as good men. Even those who are in church, manipulating all kinds of things. Just so they will look good, just so they will find, just so they will come out with a little gain. And you know what? All over the place, men are failing. Men are failing. We are becoming a dying breed. I thank God that He has mandated us to raise godly men. I thought I would get a better amen than that. So let me give you just three. Just three points. Three characteristics of godly men. Just three. There are many of them. I just want to talk about three things. And each one will have sub points. Okay. And we'll still finish early. Because I'm not preaching a boisterous message. But I want us to listen carefully. We need godly fathers. True? And I've said that godly men become godly fathers. True? Good. So if we can help define who a godly man is. 
and someone can fit into that category, then if they are not a father yet, when they become a father, they will be godly. True? Good. If the person is a father and fits the description, you know surely they will be a good father also. You see how? As we go through, you'll see. A godly man is a man, number one, who trusts in the Lord. Don't you tell me that your man, your husband is godly. Don't you even dare say he is good when he does not trust in the Lord. Your Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, do what? Now listen to me. You want a man who is godly? Is the man that acknowledges God. You see, when you trust, you acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will direct your path. So, what do I mean by trusting God? The man who is godly must first trust God with their lives. Must surrender to God. I am talking about salvation. If your man is not saved, how do you expect that man to be a good godly father to your children? So, the young woman in this house, hear me clearly. When you are going for a man, don't go for height or color, or the build, built, or whatever. Listen to me. I want you to understand this. Go for a man who has surrendered his life to God. Because that man must first trust God with their own lives. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Are y'all listening to me? I, I want you to understand this. That this, Listen, we, we, we don't work our way into salvation. So however good someone is, maybe he is good with money, maybe he is good with business, maybe he is good with something else. Oh, he's such a kind person. He's all that. But listen to me. If he has not surrendered his heart to Jesus, something is missing. And that which is missing is the most important piece. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul. You are looking for a man look for a man that is connected to God. So the men who are hearing the sound of my voice how connected are you to God? How connected are you? Hallelujah. I am talking about men who in the Lord for divine ability. Bible says that even the young ones who fail. Are you listening to me? Listen, those who, whom you think have the strength or knowledge or whatever, they will pay. Sometimes they will wait. It takes those who wait on the Lord they are to be removed. So, so you're looking for a man and who Stand in the face of adversity. Look for a man who trusts the Lord for divine ability. That the Lord is the source of their strength. Not then. I mean, we like Jim. Maybe our phone in our church. I mean, hear this. I stood behind the I think last year or two years, I think two years ago, I'm not too sure exactly when. And I said, any man that attends the hand and never asks the wine is a bird. You don't know where your strength comes from. You're a bully. Amen. I say amen. And this is Thought woman too. Whether it's your hand or your mouth, is the same. Some abuse with the hand, others abuse with the mouth. Oh, I'm going away. Let me 
come back. When you know the source of your strength is the God who sits throne, that when any happens, you are going to that God. And the church said, Amen. Yes, there is a problem. But I've spoken to God. Man who is so simple, have you talked to God about the issues you have seen? About your wife, about your children, about your business, about your job, about whatever it is. Have you drawn strength from above? Have you gone to God to ask him strength to go through? I know times are hard. It's easy to declare it. Times are hard. But where is your strength from? You all know it. As a 40, I've told you about it, 30 and 31. In the Lord with their substance. And about money for You see, let me talk to somebody here, especially the young women here, uh, the only one. The sound voice. When you are going into a relationship, I, I'm not, I definitely, I'm not, you know, going to raise gold diggers or anything. No, 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 no. No, that's out of the question. But hear this. You must understand. You see, you must have a man who understands kingdom principles concerning money. A man does not know how to give regularly for the further of God's work. Listen to me. I don't know what the excuses are. Hear the sound of my voice. They haven't surrendered their lives to God. Because surrendering to God involves that. If you can't give your substance, you can't give your life. Because why you try to say your heart be all how much treasure is it? Love the come of God, you love the church Christ is building. How much of your treasure is in it? If your treasure is not in it, your heart is not in it. Where are the godly men? Where are the people who say God is me? Christ is building. But how does it build? How does it build? That's who should finance the work? Who should do Where are men? Where are the men? That will stand and say, we will sh- 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 work. We have this to put a lot Ghana. So now we'll just borrow it. He said, listen to me. I'm going to say that tithing is the biggest thing. It is the first step of your obedience. You don't conquer that. It says, it says if you don't conquer that, you haven't conquered as other aspects of your obedience. Listen to me. Hear this. He said, when you tithe, it's not have done something great. It was required of you. What you are able to give after. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's, it's not working. Okay. You sure? If this one does it, I'll come back for my microphone. Hallelujah. Okay. Now boost me up a little bit and uh, I think the um, river should be out. It's the Lord. I want to make my sound come. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. You, you all know sound now, right? Uh, have you seen how it's changed? That's it. Now y'all are becoming musicians. <laughs> so Father Hear this. Hear this. You are able to do beyond tithe. It's what actually defines you. The tithe defines God. Because he's the one who he didn't choose that percent. He said, give it. So he defines him. But if you do beyond the tithe, now I didn't say in place of the tithe. I said beyond the tithe. That's what defines you. So when you are already struggling with that one, when he has required it, okay, the, 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 Oh, but 
before you arrive at a story, what do you have? There's, there's a, 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 I have physics. Okay. Listen. Listen. It's a simple thing. It is a simple thing. That you say give it. And you don't give it. There are aspects of life that God says think about that you either. Now, that's why I did You may say, have you tested my, I don't know. It's possible. It's possible that, that you will not trust with your sons. There is an aspect of your life you will not have in trust with it. You got God name? Oh, he's getting a little quiet. Do you have God name? You know, I think, I, I, I see the, the young ladies are getting sadder. It's like, okay, then who is a man of marriage? <laughs> the Bible says, it, actually, let's go there. Proverbs chapter number three, quickly. Proverbs. Proverbs 3. Quickly. Proverbs 3. Let's verses 9 and 10. It's the same scripture. You know, verse 5 says, In the Lord with your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, in all, six, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Right? Verse 7 says this. I'll go to verse 9. Don't worry. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health, flesh, and strength to your bones. One of the things I've seen about men, it is easy to be wise in our own eyes. The Bible would define one thing, a man would define it in another way. Because he wants it to make sense to him. And he wants it to fit, you know, what he wants. So God says this, he says, no, 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 no. But how about that? And how about this? And how about those? Hear me. Hear me. Do not wise your own eyes. And this says, to be held to your flesh and strength to your bones. So check your health. <laughs> Let's go there. Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruit of all your increase. So your bones be filled with plenty and your hearts are full with new. Let me tell you the story of man. Let me tell you what God is saying here. Man says, God, give plenty and then I will honor you. Is that not what we think? Uh, if a lot, then you can give more to God and all the. No, 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 no. God says, honor me and then I will give you plenty. This is different. No. Don't get it reversed. Don't get don't wait for God to go before you give him. the little that you have. I like what the present generation says. Now people don't say least anymore. <laughs> However small it is, it can be infinitely small. So give to God. You want my, my, my English to come? this. Do not wait for plenty. Become a giver. Honor the Lord with yeshes and with the first fruits of all your increase. The Bible says that when you increase anyway, all of it in your fruit. It says when you do that, then your barns will be filled with plenty. Vast of new wine. Now, that we can talk about later. But listen, men who trust in the Lord with their lives for divine ability, with their substance and for wisdom. And for wisdom. 
Listen to me. When you are dealing with a man who does not trust the Lord for wisdom, when you are dealing with issues, okay, they are thinking what their friends are saying. I think, you know, what, what is, is logic to them, which actually is so illogic to women at times. Are they true? Sometimes, men, Men are not utility or a man. The women are intuitive. You can see brilliant men like me and I was Let me give it to men a little bit. And sometimes we are intuitive at all. We miss the little details. The, 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 the woman has seen it long ago. It takes a long, long time. <laughs> Listen to me. We're home, a woman. And the people had come to to, to and said to him, lower access. May you go to the chief. She had been there. And she then, you know, beyond what they were asking for. And would they have just doubt what would have now look at him, boys, boys. Right taking advantage of the others, he will go, boys, boys. Just others, his fears, he will say about it. And they give him one of the stupidest things in the Bible. Go and tell him your little finger is sticking in your father's face. Do you go and not? Father, I see them lips. You are silent with open us. And you go and do that. He is burdened on top. You see what I'm talking about? When you were supposed to be a man, you a boy. And it will raise you how 34, 50 year old boy. Yes, thank you. Get 16, and they're already a woman. A boy is 45, and until 17. Some men might feel busy. You will come back. The spirit of God will come and bring you back. <laughs> it says, if any man lacks wisdom, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. Listen to me. That is why it should be answered. It's because God says, ask. When you ask, pray, he will me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want our family to do? Ah, God, how do you want to position our family? Why are you not to? The what goes to God? Hallelujah. Amen. Number two. I have only three. I spent all the time in one. So, two or three for each of the next points. Number two, you want to see a God man who will become a God father. It's about a man who has learned to lead. Listen to me. Some people have been built as followers for so long that they have not learned to lead. If you don't learn to lead, okay, you will never be a good father. Because when you become a father, you need to lead your children. And you need to lead your family. Are you listening to me? There are men who are fighting with their children rather than leading. All of this. They have actually seen a man fist fight with their child, with their son. No kidding. This fight. Close. By the time we're done, coming from the boys know that how godly is that? So ungodly. I don't care how you define it. I don't care what the boy did. 
That is never the case. That should never be the case, sorry. You need to lead. And leading is a powerful thing. Let me tell you this. Leadership is not an easy task. If you think it is, I can just sign. Just a month. Come and be a bishop. Just a month. You will tell your story. God will keep you safe and he will tell your story. Leadership is a powerful thing. How do you tell your pregnant wife that we are moving from the state, going to another state, crossing that state, two more states, to go to a fourth state, and tell your wife, your pregnant wife, are you hearing somebody that God has spoken to you and God says that go when you go, it's not easy, but he will accomplish you. How do you carry your wife, your, your, your two little ones, and the pregnant one, the sad woman, the mother, the young girl, and move all of them? How do you do that? How do you? And, and you go, and, and, and in three months, four months, no, actually, it wasn't the first one, because we paid the first ones. But now you are three months behind your mortgage. Getting all kinds of letters, beautiful letters. Then the measure of your leadership will be seen. I have heard people that talk about 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 when they are they are they are into a situation when they are not. That situation and so forth and so on, and you know what? They lose it. Men, men, real men, supposedly men, they lose it because they lack leadership qualities. Men, are you all leading? So, three areas you need to lead. I'm talking about godly men who will be godfathers. If you want to see a godly man. Is the one that leads his own flesh. There are people who can't lead their own flesh. They can't lead their own flesh. How are they going to lead you, woman? Hallelujah. If they can't put their flesh under control, how are they going to lead the family? They buy anything and everything. Anything and everything. They roll with anyone. And no discretion. No tact. Say anything. You talk about man rules the flesh. You want a godly man? The flesh must be subjected. Listen to me. You can, you can watch a person and in just three minutes you will know the flesh and the Lord. their own flesh, their family own. Hear me? Being a father is easy. You have one child, two children, four, I, mean, I have a whole care about you. So I can do. Hear me? It is not easy. Two of our children in private schools. Do you know what we are doing? Serious. And not only lead families, but lead on to Christ. Hear me, people. We are talking about the real man. He's the one that follows the agenda of God. People, men all over, follow all kinds of agenda, doing all kinds of things. Yes, you can do your business. Yes, you can do, do your job. Yes, you can do. People doing things all over, you know, play a game, do everything you do. But where do you fit the agenda of God? Hallelujah. Amen. So you need a man, a godly man, needs to lead their own 
flesh, lead their family, lead the unsaved to Christ. Hear me, people. That is where, when I say lead family, that is where I need to say this. You cannot judge God man until he is example to his children. You listen to me. You cannot judge him godly until he is an example to his family. How much of an example are you, oh man? Last, the third point. The Lord, men who have learned to lead, last one, men who have learned to love, to love, to love. A God man loves. No, too many. You want to know a man? Okay, give him how much. Love God. Does he really love God? How much he loves his wife, children. You cannot just be all over the place. You must love your wife and children. How much you love the work of God. Now, because of time, I can't get into these very well. But love is a powerful thing. You know, the mistake a lot of men make is that they are not able to distinguish love from like. People like, hear this, okay? They're like, okay, if this goes that way and I like it, great. I don't like, like sh- sh- you get what I want to say? When you are a true man, it's not like you have what you call the agape of God. You are able to go beyond circumstances so that you exhibit the love of God. And the church said, Amen. True men exhibit the love of God. Because to me, your wife will wrong you, your children will wrong you, your in-laws will wrong you, your friends will wrong you. How do you react to those things? God man knows how to love and love properly. You see, people meet people like men, especially young ladies, men, sometimes they judge the love. Oh, he bought me this. Oh, he gave me this. Gave me a car. Gave me a flower. Bought me this. Did this for me. Yes, people. Judge the love here. You never know how much a person loves until they have to deal with what they don't like. You know how they love? Let them deal with what they do not like. Then you will know whether they truly love. So I will end with the scripture we read. Proverbs 27. The right man walks in his integrity. And the Bible says his children are blessed after him. The new living says that his children who follow him are blessed. Hear this. Let God man walks in his integrity. The God man walk, talk about integrity. Okay. I am talking about doing integrity. Thing, right thing at the wrong time, the right, the right time, right motive. Doing the right thing, the right, the right motive. Motive is very important. Integrity. Someone can do what seems right to us, but with the wrong motive. If someone okay, buys something, its motive is to do a particular thing, it's not integrity. Are you hearing me? So the Bible says that the righteous man must live in his integrity. And then his children who follow after him bless. God raised righteous men in the chapel. May God raise righteous men 
from among all those that are listening to the sound of my voice. Men who will trust in him. Men who will lead. Men who will love. Men who will learn that it is okay to be vulnerable to their wives. And even to their children at times. Men who will stand in their integrity. Walk in their integrity. Men who will model what they want to see in their children. And may their children be blessed. They follow to the glory of the Father. We are done for today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to take our tithes and our offering. I, offerings. I understand that the program is long, so um, I had to finish the casting. Wrap up, wrap up, wrap up, wrap up. So I wrapped up. Okay. Okay, don't tell me I had to finish that time. I should have known before. Okay, now quickly, let's take a nice offering. If you are giving, uh, those listening to me on Facebook, on YouTube, you want to give to Life Chapel, go to my life chapel at uh, mylifechapel.com. Sorry, M Y L I F E C H A P E L, mylifechapel.com, and uh, you can give there. There is a giving button there. Click on it and you can give. If you want to give, via text a calling the fact that you have a a child doesn't make you a father right we understand that we you've been in the house of god you've been a life chapel and you understand that so fatherhood is a calling it's a calling god has actually called you as a father to be a father it's a role that you have to pick up and and, and actually do it diligently and 
we, we know here at Life Chapel, and what we are doing right now is we are following a noble tradition and a godly one indeed to celebrate our father of the house right now. So I know you are excited. You are here. You are excited that you are about to celebrate your father. We celebrate our father every, every time we acknowledge our father. But the Bible, Bible tells us to do what? To honor. Basically, honoring is to, to, to pay what? Reverence. To give reverence to your father. So the Bible says we should do what? Honor our fathers and our mothers. So that it will be what? It will be well with us, right? So that our days will be what? Long on this earth. So right now, Father's Day, today, we are celebrating Life Chapel. We are celebrating our father in the house. Our father is a God.